What I will talk about right now is metadata standards. And before I start, um, a little bit forward looking to tomorrow and Thursday when you will be working on your own data sets. I suppose everybody brought some kind of data with them. Um, just keep in mind, if we go through this presentation, the data set that you brought with you, because a lot of what I say you will also be able to use when you start processing your own data set. Because if you quality control or standardize your data, it's not just about the data, but also about the metadata. And metadata is basically data about your data. And I will just go through some metadata items that are important and that should be documented if you provide a data set to someone or if the data set goes online through Afrobis and um, OBIS. So you might wonder why do we need metadata? If we have the data, why do we need any other information? The metadata is there to help you understand your data in a better way. And it's also important that if you have metadata, that you try to store it together with your data. If you would have, for example, your data set in Excel, then it's very easy to keep your metadata there too, just by uh, adding an extra sheet and storing your metadata there. Is it working? <laughs> um, the metadata that are of importance can actually be summarized in the six W's of information. And that is, you need to know who has processed or collected the data, what has been done, when it has been done, where it has been done, why has it been done, why has the data been collected, and then how, also have, has a W, but at the end, how has the data been uh, collected. Um, if you look at those six W's of information, you see that you need to be thorough because none of those questions can be answered by a yes or a no. So you do need to be a little bit uh, elaborate on the information that you provide. So for example, the, the why could include the objectives of the original uh, field research or the experiment that was conducted. Um, it could also contain some information on the limitations of the data. For example, if your data set is about um, threatened species, then it does make sense that you don't want to give the exact location of where you have observed that species. So a limitation of the data might be that you are not providing exact coordinates, but derived coordinates to a grid or something like that. And also important is that you include uh, a citation. Each data set should have a citation, and that citation is something that you can compare to the citation of a publication, the reference that you add, for example, in a, in a publication. And also, if already um, there's publications existing on the data that you have, then it's also good to document that, because that publication will most probably contain additional information on the sampling methodology, on the how and the where and the when of the data. So I'll just go to, uh, through some metadata guidelines. Uh, these go both for Afrobis, for OBIS, for GBIF, for any place where you would submit your data to make them publicly uh, accessible. And the first thing that you need to look at is a data set title. Each data set should have a title and this title should be as descriptive as possible because the title is mostly the first thing that people will search on. They won't necessarily directly search on specific data but they will search through keywords or through a part of a data set name. And if you have a good data set title, then that provides the users already with some very valuable information before they actually look at your data. So just to give you some examples, these are um, data set titles that we received uh, within Eurobis. And um, I don't know how good you are at guessing, but uh, I wouldn't be too sure what the first two data sets, for example, would be about. Because this, this is what has been provided as a title, and it actually says nothing. The second one, okay, we know it's about Bentos. The, the third one, sorry, the fourth one, I have no idea. And the fifth one can be anything, okay? So what we do as data management team is try to make a more descriptive title, but always in collaboration with your data provider, because he does need to agree with what you get or with what you uh, name the data set. So after some consultation, this is what we got. And um, 
that's a bit more descriptive and more clear what the data is about. So that's what I mean by a good and descriptive title, that your title at least contains what it is about. Is it bentos? Is it plankton? Is it fish? Is it invertebrates? Is it birds, mammals? That something is there. Something on the location is also already very helpful. If you know it's a North Sea data set or an, an, um, a data set from Namibia, see if you can get that in the title because it makes it more descriptive. And uh, sometimes they also include something on the time frame. If it would be a long-term data set, it's very easy to add that the data have been collected from 2000 to 2010, for example. So these are all things that you can keep in mind and you can actually use for the data set that you brought yourself or that you deal with. Now, very important, if you get a data set from a provider, you cannot just change it yourself. You do need to consult with the person that gave you the data set because it's his data and he does need to agree uh, with the changes that you propose. And then another very important one is if the data set has already been published elsewhere, you cannot change the title. No matter how bad it is, once it's published, for example, through GBIF or it has a certain DOI, which means that it, it's unique and it's searchable, then you cannot change it anymore. That's uh, something you need to keep in mind. <coughs> okay. Uh, other important things that go together with a data set is the contact information. It's good that you get a data set and that you can uh, provide it to Afrobis or another initiative, but you do need to have the name, at least the name and an, an email address or a telephone number of the person that gave you the data set. Also for yourself, if you have any questions on the data set while you are processing it, you need to have a contact person, you need to have someone that knows about the data and that can help you to correctly interpret the data to see how you, how you need to uh, use them or process them. Um, also for the users of, for example, Afrobis, if they have a contact person there listed in the metadata, they can easily contact that person to get more information. Perhaps there's more data available that just doesn't fit within Afrobis, but that is available with uh, the original data provider. And also um, the contact information can help if someone wants to collaborate with that specific researcher because he finds that data set really interesting or wants to do something similar, then it's broader research that's possible collaboration for your data provider with someone else. An abstract or a description, everybody knows what an abstract and a description is, it just gives some basic information, should be short, should be clear, and should really be related to the data set. And by that I mean that in some cases you have data sets that are collected within a certain project. It doesn't make sense to describe the project as an abstract. It does make sense to specify what the data set is about within the context of the project. So be specific, be as specific as, uh, as possible on that. Then citation. Um, given the public access of the data within Afrobis and Ovis, then citation is basically the most important thing that is there for a data set. And as I said earlier, you can compare it to a, a publication reference. It makes the data set citable, it makes it traceable. And um, the format of the citation can differ. It also differs within uh, different journals, uh, how you build your citation. But it should contain at least your data set title, the good one, not the short one. The authors, uh, which could be the data managers, the collectors, or the responsible researchers of the data set. And also interesting is the name of the data holding institute, because that institute carries some kind of responsibility to, to make the data available. Um, within your own institute, if you create citations for data sets, then it's good that you use a specific standard, if that is possible. So as a data manager, you could decide yourself um, if you put the initials of the authors before or after the name, if you use commas or, or uh, periods or any other um, separators. You just need to be consistent. That helps in standardizing and in um, and further uh, distributing the data. And uh, also make a decision on whether you want to use the full name of an institute or the acronym or both. Full name is of course more descriptive than an acronym, but the acronym might be more familiar to other people than the full name. So 
that's a choice you can make yourself. Uh, these are just some examples. So you could have the uh, the persons that were responsible for the data collection in the first uh, example. Then the year between brackets is uh, in this case, or in these cases, that's the year when the last sample has been collected. Just to kind of say this is the closure of the data set. So the last sample in this case was collected in 1992 or the next example, 2002. So then you have the title, which is descriptive or as descriptive as possible. And then in most cases, you also have uh, the institute. And if the data is already available somewhere or you have a very thorough metadata description uh, available somewhere, you can also add the link. Um, most metadata systems, and also the one that uh, Afrobis is using, the IPT, allows to give keywords to your data set. And keywords can also help in discovering the data. Uh, keywords can be anything, but they mostly relate to the taxonomy, the geography, and the temporal boundaries or the, the bounding boxes of the data set. Um, then the usage of the data set is basically the provider saying how his data set can be used by someone else. So you should document how or under which conditions the data set can be used. Um, in most cases, or the most easy ones uh, are the Creative Commons license, which means that it's freely available if cited. Um, some data sets might have a restricted use. Um, I'm going back to the example that I gave. If you have um, endangered species within a data set or uh, commercially important species, then the provider might say, OK, you can say that my species is present at a certain location, but you cannot say how many did I find. So you just go for a presence data set instead of an abundance data set. That might be a restriction. And then in summary, just giving the overview here. So you just check if the relevant metadata information is there, if it is completed, and you pay attention to a title, a contact person, citation, and so on. If you did not receive that information, then the best thing is to go back to your provider and ask him about it. Uh, now it's five W's, it was six, so it should be six. And then very important is check if your data set title is understandable. And uh, I'm giving examples here in the sense of the Western movie, everybody probably knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you have good data set titles, which would be the first one. You have bad ones that say nothing. And then you have the ugly ones, which do say everything they need to say, but in a very cryptic way. So. The ugly ones are very easy to format and to come to the good example. This is a very uh, small change that you could propose to your provider. And then also try to assign relevant keywords because this helps really helps in the discovery of the data. And if the data are easily discovered, then there's more potential that they will be used more often by other people. Is there any questions on the metadata? So in any case, what, what I just told here, you will be using in the sessions where you will be preparing your own data set for submission. So if you have any questions, we can still uh, get back to that. Okay, so I don't think they're directly related to metadata, but it's two questions. The one is, if you've got an ongoing project, like a monitoring project, mm -hmm. how's, what's the best way to submit the data? But it's still, you know, you will get more data every second month or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, um, what you do in that case is um, you can do several things. First, you can ask your provider, is it OK if we share part of the monitoring data? And what they mostly will do is say yes, but not the data of the, I'm saying something, two or four most recent years, because they might still be processing that or they are using that in publications. So you could be able to share, let's say, the first 10 years of the monitoring and then you have a time lag each year you can make additions. So you just update the data set within Afrobis every year. Every two months maybe is a little bit a lot, is, is a lot. But if you could yeah, agree. For, for submission, like, is it advisable to submit once a year? You know, not if, if, it if could you be. know that, OK, it's flagged for, for the XMI second phase. So you mm -hmm. can flag data in, in August or not. Okay. Uh, flag, what do you mean by flag? 
but can you submit data but you don't put it on the database? No, the, no. the moment you submit, it goes online. Okay. So it's so the provider that needs to cut in his data yeah. and only provide what he wants to be available online. And when I put a monitoring thing and I submit like every year, mm -hmm. year's data, will it appear as one data set or will every year be a new data set? Um, it should be as one data set because the metadata will mention that it's a monitoring data set which automatically implies that if it's monitoring it's continuous so updates are uh, made an example what we have within Eurobis is the data from ICES the phishing troll surveys we do updates I think about every six months so they just send us what they have or what they want to make available and then six months later, we get a new additional batch of data that go online. So if going to now um, fish data, for example, if you if you submit your data and it's fine to, to make the species available, but not the abundances. So you basically only to mm -hmm. always you just submit the positions and the species, but yes. in the metadata you say basically that you yes. have abundances. So if someone's interested, they can contact yeah. the, the data. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's why the metadata are so important. Yeah. You can also mention that you only provide the presence data, but the metadata can say, like, the original provider also has abundance, biomass, length, weight, frequencies for fish, for example. And then it's the user that needs to have the, the reflex to, to go to the original provider to see if there can be a, a sharing of data or some kind of collaboration. Okay. So, that is the... Our data set is going to be from the, the, the species mm -hmm. and the, the latitude and longitude. Okay. Yes, that's okay. That's, okay. that's no problem. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, the minimum, well, Mike will uh, talk about that in a minute about the minimum information that is needed for OBIS. So I'll leave the answer to Mike. Okay, because <laughs> okay. I have some data. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not in uh, yes scientific name. I have it in okay. uh, scientific code, so I, I could not. Okay. So you would need the scientific name if you know how to translate from the code to the scientific name. Yes. Then you just do that before you submit the data, because we 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 cannot work with codes. We have no idea what. C one P plus whatever it means. So we do need the translation to the to the name. And by scientific codes you and that means the first four letters of the genus and the first four letters of the species name? Is that Yes. Okay. But still I will try to to do because there are names. I'll try to do what I can do because for the fish the genus of fish, I have all of them in scientific name. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. We'll have a look tomorrow in the exercises. Okay? <laughs>